hi guys welcome back to my channel i needed to do this video because it's it's just choking right now in nigeria and we all need to speak up because this country nigeria <laughs> guys we just take in a lot of things a lot of rubbish and we act as though it is normal and it is no big deal which is why some of these things have gone on for years and years without anything being done about it first off i want to say that i am so proud of this generation like they call us phone pressing generation social media generation but guess what now our phones are our press we are beginning to use what we have what is open to us to seek for what we actually need and i say thumbs up to everybody that has been protesting whether online or physically everyone that has been supporting this protest i just say thumbs up and i pray to god that all of this ends with our request being met seriously because it is high time we speak up it is high time we come out and talk about this so when this whole thing started i started thinking back to myself have i ever been a victim of police brutality or the SARS that have been talked about i know you guys that are non nigerians might have been hearing or seeing the hashtag nsas in nigeria well we have been protesting against nsas which is a, a section of the nigerian government that is supposed to deal with anti-robbery you know and protect the citizens but what they've been doing is harassing assaulting killing and basically just utilizing the power at their disposal to make us feel less human and less secure in our own country so that got me thinking have i been a victim of police brutality or have i been a victim of the SARS? seriously i have been a victim of both and what really made me so sad was the fact that i experienced police brutality while i was much younger but not until this whole protest came out i i didn't even remember it like that's how sickening the system is we just suck it in and we act like it never happened like nothing is there okay let me not take too much of your time guys my mom back then in 99 she had a shop in front of our house where she sells baby things and on this fateful day this police van drove in with a, a, a suspect in chains and handcuffs and the suspect pointed my mother and said oh this woman bought the stolen bag of a bundle from me and everybody was like what are they talking about and my mom said what is happening here the police officer said you're under arrest for buying a stolen bag of obono anyway obono is a grain we use in making soup here in nigeria and my mom said i didn't buy anything like that you can see my shop i sell baby items why don't you make a search you know and see if you will see anything like that then you can arrest me and the police went ahead and slapped my mother in the face and was like i'm telling you you're under arrest you're talking to me and my dad wasn't even at home at the time so when people around saw what was happening they rushed to go call my dad where he was i was a little girl then that was 99 and i was scared like what's going on why are these people beating my mom what has she done you know i'm hearing everything and it doesn't seem to make sense and the next thing they dragged my mom on the floor into their van and as they were about driving off reversing to drive off my dad was coming with his motorcycle and they used their van to just crash my dad's motorcycle and he fell on the floor he fell on the floor and they drove off with my mom i still remember it like yesterday i remember it so clearly and it hurts that was 99 there was no SARS then that was police the nigerian police that are supposed to protect you even if you are a suspect you're not even supposed to be treated like that until you know your case is taken to court and due process is followed guys guess what <laughs> my dad went to the police station and asked for my mom to be bailed and released and they said no that wasn't happening my dad said she was going to be bailed he contacted his lawyer and they said he wanted to take the matter to court <laughs> this is the funny thing when that case got to court the judge demanded for the statement of the alleged thief and his statement read that he told the police officers who actually bought the stolen bag of abono from him but the officer in charge said no i cannot arrest that woman because she is my sister we're going to drive around town and any shop will stop and tell you points that this is the person you will point and say that is the person that was how my mom was arrested for something she knew nothing about the judge looked the suspect in the face and said is this statement true is this what happened he repeated it in front of the judge and said this is exactly what happened and i told the police officers i don't know this woman i don't know who she is they picked her and that was how the judge discharged and acquitted my mom like it was so so painful it was so heartbreaking i don't even want to think what could have happened if my dad didn't have a lawyer or if we didn't take the matter to court all sorts of things or god wasn't even on our side that is how bad nigeria is that is how bad this police system is a few years ago is it maybe about two years ago my husband is a lawyer and he was going out but he wasn't dressed in any 
suit or anything. He just wore a regular distressed demi jean and a shirt and he held a briefcase. And when these SARS operatives saw him, they stopped him because he was wearing a distressed jean. And they started inquiring what was in his briefcase. They wanted to open the briefcase. And my husband is like, I'm a lawyer. I have documents to go file in court. These people insisted on opening the briefcase and seeing the documents. Why also using words that are not even supposed to be used for him? Simply because of how he's dressed. Okay? When they finally saw the document and discovered that, oh, he's a lawyer, the next thing they're like, eh, where's your ID card? You're not working with ID card and all sort of stuff. That made them like go back because, oh, he's a lawyer. He knows his rights and we could be in trouble. And they left him. When he came home and told me this story, I was like, what would have happened if you didn't have documents with you to show that you were a lawyer? What, what would they have done? They would have simply just dragged you into their van, to their office or wherever and brutalized you like they do simply because of how you are dressed. It is annoying. It is sickening. The youth of these days, we are free to dress the way we want, do what we want to do. Having phones or having laptops doesn't mean that you're a criminal. But how do you even explain to them that you're a blogger, you're a vlogger, or you are a computer engineer or something? They don't want to hear any of those things. Once they see you with an iPhone, they see you with a laptop, dreadlocks, tattoos, or you're dressed beautifully, you are a criminal. And you are, you are a victim for them to just lash out their powers on. And it makes you think if this has something to do with their training or whatever it is that happens to them when they go to this training to become these police officers or whatever it is that they are, or it is just pure intoxication with power because they have a gun at their disposal. It is sickening. It is painful. So please, I am doing this video in support of the NSAS protest and I am telling everyone watching this video, please, please and please support the protest as much as you can. They are making it look like now protesters are hoodlums and folks and that's not true. They are opening prisons and alleging that the protesters are opening prisons. Like, I don't even understand where a prisoner comes out of prison or breaks out of prison without them wearing prison uniforms. They all are clean shaved. They all look well. Some even have necklace with them and traveling bags. That is how bad the system is. Politically, they have hijacked it and they're trying to make it look like, oh, we are bad, we are talks and all sorts of stuff. Please, please and please, we are protesting for our lives. We're protesting for what is rightfully as We're protesting to the end of bad government. We're protesting to the end of police brutality. We're protesting to the end of SARS or SWAT or whatever name they choose to call it. So what can you do to support this? Use the NSAS hashtag on Twitter, on all your social media accounts. If you cannot physically go to any of the protest centers, go online, support it. You can donate. There are credible uh, uh, sites and, and pages that you can go to and make your donations. Please, please, please. We need this to end. Our children cannot go through this. We do not want our children to go through this. We need this to end and we need it to end now. Thank you very much, guys, for watching my video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video as much as you can. Please, people need to hear about this. People need to know about this. And I'll see you all in my next video.